Hey, I'm back. This is Chandler from Melda Production, and today I want to pick up where I left off last time with the white noise and M drum enhancer inside M Sound Factory. So last time I just showed you how you could use that to make drum sounds like snare sounds or tom sounds or even bass drum sounds, and it sounded a bit like this. And by changing M drum enhancer, we can, you know, alter the sound if I want to change the sample like this. Actually, I like the other one better. But of course, you can change that however you want. And here I have it at mono, but I could change it to, you know, stereo like this. There's all sorts of things we can do with that. And I showed that last time. If you haven't checked out that video, definitely check that out. But I'll show you some other things we can do. So here you see we have the same thing. We just have a tom. And here what this sounds like, well, just the tom by itself first, like this. But then we can just mix them both together like this. And to me, that sounds much more powerful. Some things you may not have noticed is you can actually delay some of these also. So if I want to go in here, you see delay and I can move this, you know, really far in the future like this. This is way too much. You hear it sounds like two different drums and you may not want that, but maybe around 20 something. Sometimes that actually makes your drum sound bigger and thicker than just one, like this, versus this. That may be a little bit too much. So definitely play around with that. I usually find that the higher the drum is, the more you can delay it, and the lower notes I like to keep closer to zero. But of course, play around with that. There's no rules with that, just whatever you like. Now here I'm doing two, but I'll actually show you how you can do it with more. And there's actually a device I'm working on, which I haven't finished yet, that I'll show you. So here, I wanted to make like an impact sound. So like you'd hear like with samples where they mix them together and they mix even some Foley and things in there. I thought, okay, how can I do that? So I came up with this, which hopefully sounds good. I don't know. I guess you'll be the judge of that. But here's what I have so far. So you see here, I have a snare, I have a tom, and I have a bass. I'll do each of them individually. I haven't uh, actually done all of this yet. I'm not done with it, uh, but I'm going to add more things so you can actually change the sample so you have lots of variety. But here's what the snare sounds like so far. A little bit small, but as you see here, I have different things like the sweep speed. So before, in the previous one, I think it was here, in a generator, I'm just using one filter. However, in this one, I actually used a different filter for each of these. And the reason I did that is just so I could have different uh, sweep speeds here, and I can have different uh, amounts of like slopes, etc. Let me see if I can show you what this sounds like. So I can have that kind of effect on there if I want it. And of course I can change the tone. And the pitch I can change individually. Which is good. And I can do that for the other things too, like the tom drum. I can do it for the bass too. I'll let you hear what the bass sounds like here. It's too much sustain with that there. And so I can mess with all these parameters individually so I can get a sound that I want. So let me let you hear what all these sound like together. Sounds pretty big, and you see here I have the delay for these. But there's one more here, the drop, and you're probably wondering, like, okay, what what is that doing? And I'll actually show you in here. So here I'm using this drum synthesizer 4 in. I think I showed this in previous uh, videos. And what I have here is I have a sine wave drop. So you see this is the frequency, the starting frequency, this is the ending frequency, and this controls the actual slope. So I can actually find the controls here for the drop. Uh, let me see here. I actually think that's the volume. 
Uh, where is it? Where did I put it? Ah, uh, here it is. And so I have the hike frequency here. So if I you look, if I move the multi-parameter, it moves up and down like that. And if I move down here, let me turn everything down except for the drop so you can hear it. Now, when you do a sine sweep like this, depending on how fast it is, it'll sound you know different. If you have it going really fast, it's going to sound just like a bass drum. If you have it uh, longer, it's going to sound like an 808. So let's do it here. 20 milliseconds, which is really fast. I have a, a really steep slope here. It should just sound like a clicking sound. It's a low clicking sound because I had the high frequency down fairly far. It's only like, what, uh, 700 hertz. If I move it up more, hear more click, right? And I, of course, adjust the low frequency here like that, however I like. Sometimes if it goes down too low, it's like, oh, I can barely hear the bass. Uh, maybe that's just my speakers, though. And then move it up here. And so, of course, you can adjust that however you want. You can adjust the slope here like this. So when it comes to designing bass drums, this is really something to check out because there's lots of different tones you can make just using the high and low frequency and then the slope and adjusting that. But the real difference comes with the length. So let's say I, let me move the slope up just a little bit. Instead of 20 milliseconds, let's say I move it to like 350. Now it's starting to sound like an 808. If I move it even further, I got that. I can do it even further. And we can do the same thing, adjust the slope here. Low frequency, that's about good. That make it really long. That's cool. That's like something might like a drop in a movie. So it can do those types of sounds. And you can adjust the high frequency here. Or here. Like that. But when you layer this with other things, you get a really interesting effect, at least in my opinion. So if I turn it down here at the slope where it was, it's just going to sound like a click, like uh, almost like a bass drum. Move it down a bit. And when I put the other instruments in there, it's just going to add like more bass and a lot of punch to it like this. If I take it out. In. And if I, let's see, turn the length up just a little bit, not too much, like this. You can really hear that punch coming in there. But, make sure this doesn't get too loud. I can turn the high frequency down a little bit, low frequency up a little bit, and let's just make this pretty long, like this. Now, let's try it. I might have to turn it down just a little bit. Like that. I can turn up one of the things like, oh, let's turn up the bass sustain. Hopefully that's not distorting. But you hear like how you can mess with that and you can create some of those like cinematic type drops. I probably need to adjust the uh, different sounds of these. Maybe bring this down. Turn the sustain of the snare down like this. And definitely turn this down a bit. And then from there, of course, you want to add some things like, of course, you want to distort it. Why would you make a hit that's not distorted? This. Make it loud. And then just put a bunch of reverb on it. That's what everybody does, right? And of course, you can adjust this to taste. You think, ah, that's a bit, the tail's a bit too long. So you can really add more body to this. You can add more top end. You can, you know, adjust this. Think, ah, oh, it's way too much snare. To get all sorts of different sounds out of this, and of course you can just turn them off and just use the drop, or just use the snare or the tom, etc. And hopefully in the future I'll get more of the types uh, in here. And uh, of course you can mess with this, and you probably should mess with this yourself. Besides this, I was thinking you could put a moto filter in and have. Uh, different things like glass sounds or uh, even like metal sounds, etc., to layer that in there, just like you'd layer fo Foley. And in this one, I was just trying to use synthesis. But of course, if you want to, put some samples in there. You know, have fun. 
But I just wanted to show how you could layer different sounds with this to create maybe thick and, you know, larger than life uh, impact sounds. So hope this gave you some ideas of things you can do with this yourself. If it did, give me a thumbs up. Leave me any questions or comments down below and be sure to check out all the other plugins at MelderProduction.com. Till next time, see you.